Hello, BookTube. This is the Rambling Raconteur, Jack. And I've been working through a couple of different books this weekend, but unlikely to finish any today. And hopefully soon in the next week. But one of the uh, things I did was I decided to return with another short story. And so yesterday evening I sat down and I was just in a mood for, for wanting to have some closure at the end of uh, my reading <clears throat> instead of spending another 20-30 minutes uh, just pushing through one of the two or three books I've been working on. So I turned to a familiar friend, uh, Raymond Chandler, and uh, dug into his 1938 story, Red Wind. Chandler, of course, is most famous for his novels, uh, the Philip Marlowe detective novels running uh, from The Big Sleep in 1939 all the way through uh, The Long Goodbye and Playback, which, in, in my opinion, Playback acts almost... The Long Goodbye can kind of be divided into two different uh, parts of the same novel. Playback, in, in a lot of ways, to me, sort of acts as a third piece in that novel. It's It's... It has some of the same characters, unlike any of his other novels. It has some of the same characters uh, sort of referenced or returned to, and just feels still of a piece with that. So those are the, the books he's most famous for. And he's one of the great masterful detective writers, helped really solidify the understanding of what private eye fiction, detective fiction, looked like in the United States in the 20th century. His story, Red Wind, is good. It's not, in, to my mind, it's not quite as fully developed as his best novels are, but it, it highlights two aspects of Chandler that I think are really important and unique in his work. One is that unlike the, I don't want to say English tradition, but, but in a sense the English tradition of detective stories where <clears throat> Every mystery is solved, every component of the mystery has a piece, and it all is put together by a narrator or a detective in sort of a summation at the end of the story. Um, thinking of Sherlock Holmes sort of p explaining to Watson how every single clue is placed together, or um, Agatha Christie's Hercule Poirot, where he gets everybody in the room and then explains how he's solved the mystery. <clears throat> the Raymond Chandler mysteries don't follow that trend. There are often mysteries that remain unsolved. Maybe not the central mystery. We may understand why a central crime has been committed and who committed that central crime and what the primary motivation was. But throughout his stories and his novels, there's often some unresolved mystery. There's some component to the story that is not necessarily important, but interesting that we don't receive full closure on. And that's one of the things I appreciate about short stories is that they don't necessarily explain everything. And so the reader gets to use his or her imagination and gets to uh, sort of impute uh, our own thoughts <clears throat> and questions and ideas in to fill in the gaps that exist around uh, the tiny piece that's given to us within the short story. But with Raymond Chandler, that's almost exacerbated it to, to an, an extra level. Um, famously in The Big Sleep, there's a character who, I can't even remember if the character says more than just a few sentences interacting with the detective, Philip Marlowe. He's, the character is, is not particularly important, doesn't seem to be of vital interest to the, the book's narrative or to the central mysteries within The Big Sleep, and he dies. And when they went to make a film of it, the actor portraying uh, Philip Marlowe, Humphrey Bogart, and the director of the film, Howard Hawks, were arguing about uh, who, <clears throat> whether the character had been murdered by someone or whether the character overcome with grief and, and um, emotion and, and depression at what was happening had taken his own life. And when they reached out to Raymond Chandler, he checked through his notes and couldn't remember. <laughs> he, <laughs> Raymond Chandler is not the detective novel writer or the detective story writer who has a perfect little map and flowchart plotted out of how every little piece connects and where everything's going. Um, and that's fascinating. Red Wind absolutely 
feels that way. There are mysteries that we get some closure to. There are murders we get some closure to. There are other ones that are not solved by the end of the story. At, at the end, we, we have some ideas. We can infer uh, certain events that have probably happened in the past of these characters, but we don't know everything. And we certainly don't even know everything about all of the really important characters who seem to be, you know, the thrust of the story Red Wind. <clears throat> so that's the first point about Raymond Chandler is a lot of times mysteries are unresolved, which is, to my mind, exciting and interesting as a reader that there are pieces that I get to fill in. Um, I know uh, sometimes people prefer something else prefer to have it all spelled out. The other is what one of the, the other aspect of Chandler that I really appreciate and why I dipped into Red Wind yesterday is the concept of reading a story or reading a mystery for the writing and, and for the language that's used. A lot of times, a lot of mysteries get their cachet from sort of having some twist that if, you're, if the reader's very clever and paying attention and astute, the reader will figure out kind of with the narrator or the detective within the mystery. And if the, so you can read it once through trying to sort of anticipate it and figure out once you know what the twist is, you can go back and reread it and sort of try to piece together the clues that appear and follow those through the story, which can also be fun. But if, it, if it's just a good mystery, that's sort of where the reading ends is is at most on a second uh, on a a second read a reread the really really strong strong detective stories can be reread multiple times not for the sake of their mystery but for the sake of the language for the sake of the writing and there's that sense of um the idea that g genre stories whether it's romance novels or science fiction or westerns or mystery stories the idea that those are somehow lesser than um sort of general fiction or literary fiction is to me always it has always baffled me we, we, there are outstanding writers in all those genres like truly outstanding writers in all of those genres and they all stack up alongside the sort of literary writers shoulder to shoulder and can be appreciated and enjoyed and and speak just as much about our lives as any writer in any other genre. And so I just wanted to read the first couple paragraphs of Red Wind because to me it's it's one of the things I do is when I'm looking at uh, a book of stories or particularly at mysteries, I'll read the first page. And if it doesn't strike out at me in, in this sense, then I may not, uh, purchase it or continue reading it. I, you know, I, I love mysteries. <laughs> I probably read them about as much as any other main genre. And I try to space out when I'm reading them. Um, but I, I want to make sure that when I do that, that I, I'm, I'm going to find something that I really will love. And so this is an example of the type of writing that Raymond Chandler has and an example of just what makes his work so wonderful. So this is the beginning of Red Wind. There was a desert wind blowing that night. It was one of those hot, dry Santa Anas that come down through the mountain passes and curl your hair and make your nerves jump and your skin itch. On nights like that, every booze party ends in a fight. Meek little wives feel the edge of the carving knife and study their husbands' necks. Anything can happen. You can even get a full glass of beer at a cocktail lounge. I was getting one in a flossy new place across the street from the apartment house where I lived. It had been open about a week and it wasn't doing any business. The kid behind the bar was in his early twenties and looked as if he had never had a drink in his life. There was only one other customer, a souse on a bar stool with his back to the door. He had a pile of dimes stacked neatly in front of him, about two dollars worth. He was drinking straight rye in small glasses and he was all by himself in a world of his own. And you can you can see right away that Raymond Chandler is, although he's a detective writer, he's writing in highly lyrical and, and poetic terms. The wind that he speaks about, the the, the title Red Wind, that feeling of just uh, we've all we can all we all feel immediately from that reading 
what that feels like, what it feels like to be a character in that environment where we're starting to sweat, we, we just feel warm and uncomfortable and, and everyone's on edge, everything feels tense. And we see a series of murders transpire, we see mo the character in certain versions, it's a character whose name is uh, Alms or Ames, and in others, it the story after the Raymond Chandler novels came out, he when the stories were reprinted, he would change the name of the detective to Philip Marlowe. We see that character working through a mystery, working with other characters, who, both uh, law enforcement officers and other characters who, who probably are criminals on some level, but willing to work with them to sort of bring bring together some level of closure. And, and he there's this rugged sense of, he know that character knows he's never going to know all of the answers and he wants to know just enough to feel comfortable sort of moving forward uh, in his in, in the narrative of his, of his own life and that's the way Chandler leaves us is we don't get all of the answers there are there are questions in Red Wind that are left even after the last period but it, it can still be a, a good story it's not a great story it's very very well written the mystery itself, as Chandler would say about some of his early stories, was there's a high body count and and the the central mystery. It's not quite clear why we should care so much about why any of this is happening. <laughs> um, but it but it is as anything Chandler wrote. It, the descriptions, the especially the environment, are just particularly well written. Um, when Chandler was writing, uh, in a letter from 1937, he kind of spells out his thoughts on, on writing. He says that you should have pride in your purer, purer American heritage of language seems to me a slight thing. Latin became corrupt, but French is a sharper language than Latin ever was. The best writing in English today is done by Americans, but not in any purest tradition. They have roughed the language around as Shakespeare did and done it the violence of melodrama and the press box. They have knocked over tombs and sneered at the dead. Which is as it should be. There are too many dead men, and there's too much talk about them. And that's from the uh, selected letters of Raymond Chandler. And whether you agree with that sentiment or not, I think it's important to, to realize Chandler thinks that's what he's doing. He really felt that he was going in and sort of rattling the cage of, uh, <laughs> of literature through these short stories, through his, later on through his detective novels. And that's worth considering and worth appreciating in my mind. So again, that's Red Wind from Raymond Chandler, uh, pulling it out of the Black Lizard Big Book of Pulps. Great section of, you know, about a thousand page, over a thousand pages of mostly short stories from that, that pulp magazine, detective magazine era some of which are absolutely fascinating and fantastic. Some of them are one-hit wonders of stories. Chandler was definitely not a one-hit wonder, um, but Red Wind is, is one that can absolutely be enjoyed and, and to me helps signify the difference between good mysteries that are appreciated strictly for their plot and really well-written mysteries that can be returned to time and again because of the the feeling they create in us that that atmosphere that that environment of, of dread or of some something afoot and that also in another way speak in a different in a lateral way perhaps about uh the the american experience and, and the universal human experience that we don't always find in more you know literary fiction so that's red wind by raymond chandler and I hope to be back soon. Thank you, BookTube.